Hello everybody, Patrick Glenn Nichols with Patrick Glenn Nichols Muscle Car Barn Finds and today I'm up here in western New York and I'm up here to cover another amazing 1970 Chevelle that has surfaced uh, recently. It was parked over 40 years, about less than a mile from this location and has recently moved to this location here inside of this garage. I heard about the car from the, the new owner and he was interested in me coming here and documenting the car for YouTube and possible magazine publish. So that's what I'm here to do today. I'll do my best to give you a, a really nice walk around, informative walk around video of this car. And we will start right now. You can see the car is finished in tuxedo black, upper and lower, code 19, with white stripes. Now that the garage door is shut, it will begin narrating this video this car has been parked since 1979 and not moved the previous owner purchased this car in 1975 it's been off the road since 79. one really interesting feature about this car is the assembly plant that it come from this is a canadian car this car was assembled at the oshawa canada assembly plant and purchased new in New York, the state of New York, not far from here, in New Albany, New York. Code 1919, upper and lower, with Cal induction. Those of you familiar, the Chevelle enthusiasts are familiar with the Oshawa Canada cars, are some of the rarest 70 Chevelles that are out there, and the, the tuxedo black would be one of the rare color exterior colors and one of the most sought after as well now i'm going to total walk around video the best that i can and show you the patina and all the dust that is on this car from 40 plus years of being parked and you would expect a car from being in the buffalo new york area to have you know a substantial amount of rust, but this car is very solid. It's been inside, you know, the majority of its life. You can see, don't touch my car, and that's been there quite a while. I'll show you the best that I can of the very minimal rust on this car. This is an SS396 version. 350 horsepower with the L34. The total number of those produced in 1970, which we've been over this before, 53,599. But the Canadian version of these cars is just a little over 3,000 produced according to the Canadian Vehicle Services statistics that are available for the Canadian cars. You can see the car has the T3 headlights which are hard to see in the video and the underneath chrome under the headlights right here which is a early car trait which we've been over before as well. I do believe this car has seen a total repaint at some time during its life, pre-1975. There is some body filler and some indication of some overspray in places on this car. Came equipped with white bucket seat interior with console and with a standard M20 four-speed manual transmission with the U14 
special instrumentation, tack and gauges, and UM1 AM stereo and tape. Car is showing 58,848 miles. And the UM1, that would be AM 8-track, which would be the 8-track for the time period, but all 8-track AM or AM FM were stereo, which would be have two dash speakers on each, one on each side and two rear speakers as well. And you can see the rear, the lower part portion of the rear seat has been removed because the Canadian plant, we have a, the broadcast sheet is still hog ring to that. So I will show you that in just a little bit shortly, but I really want you to see all of the dust and the buildup on this car from all of the years. And let's make a shot now of the door jam decal. And you can see without the glare, manufactured by General Motors of Canada. And there's your VIN 136372 or hard type zero for 70. One is a designation for the Oshawa Canada assembly plant. And then the last six of the VIN 527063. And then the production date was December 1969. But you can see also the evidence of the black overspray in the door jam, which leads would lead you to believe that the car has been or has seen uh, at least one repaint in its life. And we have what looks appears to be some body filler at the bottom and a little bit of damage to this quarter panel as well. So that's your indication solid proof that the car has seen some body work in its life but there's not a lot of rust in this car being a new york car which i've covered a lot of barn finds from the northeast southeast and there's a lot of nice cars up here in the northeast but the ones that were put away and this is one of them this is one of those cars now let's go into the trunk area now and see what we have here We got a lot of cool 70s period correct stickers, the Hearst, the Hijackers, Valvoline racing oil. Look at the trunk area. And I think there's some evidence where some dents have been, you know, beaten, banged out, and there's some body filler. But you can see the really heavy spatter paint with the the really the big dots and the, you know the, the spatter paint was really heavy and really inconsistent which is really correct it's hard to duplicate that a lot of guys try it and get close but the process that was used originally is really tough to duplicate these days you can see it there it's really messy when you have, you know, it's very inconsistent. You have big splatter and a little splatter, which is the way that it was. A lot of day two items on this car as well. You can see these are the original heads. And one really interesting feature about this car is the fact that for some reason, and my opinion says that sometime during this car's life, a girl by the name of Tina owned this car. Or somebody had a girlfriend by the name of Tina because the same stickers, or do you see that swirly sticker, which is on the interior as well, was stuck or used to make the name Tina on the rear axle cover. 
So your guess is as good as mine, but I'm thinking Tina owned this car at one time. So pretty cool little lady by the name of Tina somewhere. And we have some ladder bars, which is the day two, which, which would be eliminate the rear F41 suspension, which most Chevelle enthusiasts understand in 70, the F41 had a rear stabilizer bar under that went from the, from control arm to control arm underneath the axle, which that had to be removed when you uh, installed the ladder bars. Now let's move around the car to the engine bay. And you can see the patina on the chrome. I mean, this car will clean up pretty good. Appears to have the original body panels, which I don't want to disturb the dust and the patina on this car. Um, the owner is really particular with this car. He wants to leave it in as found condition for a while and not even disturb the dust on this car. It is definitely a barn find that is still in as found condition. It's been moved from its resting spot, but it's still in as found condition. Really cool car here. And the most of my followers understand the 70 Chevelle is pretty much my favorite car of all time, especially in cranberry red and tuxedo black. They really, in my opinion, are in a class all their own. And let's address the interior one more time to show you what I'm talking about. This swirly stuff right there is the same stuff that is used a decal and up here on the rear axle to spell out Tina's name. So either he had a girlfriend named Tina or Tina owned this car. Pretty neat. And now you can see the cow induction, which everybody knows about that. Really neat. Now let's lift the hood and address some features under the hood. Appears somebody used a chain or something to pull the car from the front. It's, it's sometime in its life. The bumper is being up just a little bit. And of course you see the under headlight cr chrome or molding as some refer to it as. And the stripes appear pretty correct, but my opinion says they have been repainted at least once. Now, under the hood and we've addressed before but you can see the early style 70 Chevelle cowl induction hood this hood is super hard to find in excellent condition and not been up beat up rusted to death and this car this hood in fact is probably one of the best original untouched undented if you will, versions that I've seen in a long time, maybe the very best, it's beautiful. And let's see, you have the axle. You can see the car did have some day two items installed. We see headers, the four blade fan, which is correct on the L34 is still in place. You can see the shallow groove pulley, which would be the, the two letters following the part number, which would be DU for this particular pulley, which would be on the build sheet as well. That's for this single groove, which would be for the hydraulic canned engines, this one and the LS5 of the Super Sport versions. And this car is numbers matching. T for Tonawanda, one, two for, for 
for December 01 for the first and CTX for 350 horsepower and manual transmission. And the VIN sequence number, which we've addressed before, the numeral one for Chevrolet Motor Division, zero for 1970, number one, which designates the Oshawa Canada assembly plant, and then 527063 are the last six of the VIN. Do my best to show you the, the rest of this engine bay as it was found. And you can see, which we've been over this before as well, but we'll go over it again. The Oshawa Canada plant and the Baltimore, Maryland plant shared the same version of the plastic inner fender. There are two separate versions, whereas Arlington and Van Nuys shared the other version from another supplier. So you see the left hand, which is scribed in into the plastic and the right hand that's the version that was used by the Oshawa Canada plant along with the Baltimore Maryland assembly plant and you can see the cal induction solenoids still in place this would be an 854 casting engine block with two bolt main bearings whereas a L78 would have four bolt, the special high performance car would have a four bolt main bearing and an eight inch balancer. But if you look, this car has an eight inch balancer, has been installed, and you can see the timing chain indicator pointer has been bent to accept the eight inch balancer. So the original timing chain cover is still in place, which this car came new with a seven inch balancer he installed an eight inch, so he had to alter the timing pointer in order for it to fit. You can see the car had manual steering. This car did not have power steering. And the square cut washer jar, which we've been over numerous times, does appear to be the original master cylinder as well. Now let's do a quick rundown of the cow tag which one really cool and important factor, maybe the, the most notable characteristic of a Oshawa Canada a built 70 Chevelle was the RPO options, namely the Z25 SS396 option was right on the cow tag. So this car, an Oshawa Canada built 70 Chevelle barring you know, any tampering with the cow tag, it authenticates itself right on the cow tag. So you can see 70 for 1970, 13637 for due to a hard top, 0S for the Oshawa Canada assembly plant designation, 532493 is the is the body number. Then you have 791 for white bucket seat interior or ivory, code 19 for tuxedo black lower, code 19 for tuxedo black upper for the body, 12B, 12B for four, December second week assembly, Z25 for the SS396 option, A51 for bucket seats, M20 for the standard four-speed manual transmission, D55 for center console, and UM1 for the AM eight-track stereo radio setup in this car. So those are the options that Oshawa Canada chose to put on the, Cal the Caltech, which is the only assembly plant that did so. So that's one good thing about a Canada, Canadian built, Oshawa Canada built car, is they authenticate themselves. Not to mention that you can order through vehicle services, the documents, the records were kept by, the, by Oshawa Canada built cars. And now I will 
pan over here to the, the rear seat that was just taken from this car and show you this. Still haul green to the back seat, still in this car. You can see what we just went over, 791. The body number, A for axle, CW, which is 331. Open, E for engine, TX, which is the last designation on the engine. We went over that. T for transmission would be WB, which is the code for the M20 transmission and the rest of the options that we just went over on this broadcast sheet still on in the lower portion of the back seat. Really valuable little piece of paper right there. And now we'll go over the options or the vehicle, vintage vehicle services information that is supplied from the Oshawa plant. So you can see there's the VIN, the vehicle, 791 bucket seats, tuxedo black, Oshawa, Canada, production date, December 17th. So that falls in line with the build date. Model number, two door hardtop, 396, 350 horse, three, three, 350 horsepower. T1201CTX is the engine number. The engine number, the original engine still resides in this car and some statistical information from the Oshawa Canada plant. And what sticks out to me is the 3006 with the Z25 SS396 option. And most Chevelle enthusiasts understand there were no SS454 LS6s assembled at the Oshawa Canada plant and only 299 SS454 LS5. So, these cars are pretty rare from the Oshawa Canada plant. And you can see the list of options that was on the document in the back seat and the options that are on the cow tag as well. But it shows the full list of options are present on the vehicle services document. I mean, this car is really documented, numbers matching, engine, trans, rear axle, a superior color combination, port parked over 40 years. It just really doesn't get much better than that in the barn fine world. Do one more walk around of the car, give you a, the best idea that I can of this car and all the patina that is on this car from 40 plus years. And if you'll notice, the hood is a lot cleaner than the rest of the car. That being because there were some blankets laid on the hood and a lot of stuff was used to store on top of the blanket. So this car, you know, generally like a lot of cars were, where this car was used for, you know, a table or something that just stacked boxes on, on the hood. The rest of the car did not have that. And you can see no way that's possible with that much dust build up on this car. Around one more time, like I said, Again, about 53,599 L34s in 1970, but this is one of 3,306, according to those figures from the Oshawa Canada plant. Really neat car. 70 Chevelle Super Sport, tuxedo black, white stripes, original engine, parked, just surfaced, right here just outside of Buffalo, New York, in Western New York, in a, in a rural area. I'm
Patrick Glenn Nichols with Patrick Glenn Nichols Muscle Car Barn Finds. You can reach out to me at Patrick Glenn Nichols Muscle Car Barn Finds on Facebook and YouTube. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. More videos on the way.